Hey guys, it's Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive on a Monday afternoon. Woohoo! It is time for the Let's Just Stamp online card class, and Facebook decided to update their program over the weekend. So you guys, it's hard to find things. <laughs> That's not why I was late, but um, I'm trying to find the video and I'm hoping it'll just pop up in my feed like it normally does. But oh my goodness, videos are underneath photos at this point and it's like you gotta hunt for things and with anything, when they change things or something gets changed in your day-to-day -day life, you have to adapt and figure it out as you go. So let's just see here if I am actually live. I don't see any comments <laughs> coming in yet. Oh yeah, I know it is weird for me to be live on a Monday, but I used to do this class on Tuesdays, Tuesdays uh, Sundays. Hi Catherine. Um, I used to do this class on Sunday afternoons, but when I quit my day job, I thought to myself, I am gonna switch to give myself my Sundays back and do this class on Mondays and so that is quite all right because the Facebook live or the YouTube live lives on forever so if you guys can't watch me live hi Carla Lake you can still catch um, the replay which is awesome and anytime I do an online class uh, I always provide a PDF tutorial for those that register for class. Hi, Cindy Runtree from Southern Virginia. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the video <laughs> uh, so I can watch your guys' comments. And I wondered if this was going to give me... Okay, so I got to go to photos. And under photos, you have to select videos and switch it to videos. But I don't... Let's see here. Hi, Faye Godby. Hi, Carol Schaefer wants me to review changes to my page so I'm gonna keep playing around with this and I wonder if it has to do if I have to go under so it's like I have my own personal profile and I have cards by Christine oh there it is live oh here it is okay let's see if I can click on this so I like to watch your guys's comments for those of you who have watched me a time or two you know I like to answer and comment on things that I see coming in and I love it when they're here, up in my screen, up at the top, there, and then also on my cell phone. Hi, Betty Pyle. Betty, thanks for sharing. And just so you know, I had an envelope in the mail today from you, and I haven't opened it yet, but I'm assuming there's a check in there. <laughs> Hi, Arliss. Happy Easter week to you. Hi, Sandy Wicklander. Hi, Mary Ellen. So my screen is frozen. <laughs> there it is. I'm for the left. Yay! Okay. Life is good. Okay. Whew. Well, I think it is anyways. So I was thinking back to a whole month ago. A whole month ago was the beginning of March. And I had literally just ended my tenure at my previous job. And I came down with um, my body telling me I needed to slow down. <laughs> Syndrome or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and so I actually had to postpone last month to be actually on the 17th. Hi, Sherry Martin. Hi, Debbie Schultz. Sherry Martin, I do have um, you on my list to call back today. You guys, I worked on my taxes yesterday. I needed to focus and not be interrupted with having to answer texts and phone calls and check emails. And so I literally put my phone on silent all day yesterday and I worked on my taxes. I do my own taxes. I do not pay somebody to do my own taxes. My dad went to school to become an accountant so there, um, he didn't do it. He ended up becoming, or st I should say, staying as a farmer because he was always a farmer. <laughs> hi, Dee. Hi, Randy. And so, but my dad, uh, he got all the way through like four years of college and then um, ended up with a business degree, and um, which really helped him uh, to become a very successful farmer. Uh, but lo and behold, I was raised to do my own taxes <laughs> and that you don't pay somebody else to do your taxes because you can do them yourself. So I sat at the computer for six hours yesterday and and I know it could take me less time, but I don't like I I keep really good records throughout the year, but I don't generally consolidate them properly. So I had an Excel spreadsheet, which is how I keep everything. Hi, Linda Hodge. Um, hi, Randy Schultz. I keep everything in pretty much access databases and Excel spreadsheets, but it was a matter of consolidating your expenses into groups and then can, you know adding up what you earned in class fees and earning in all this stuff. Right. So you got to figure out your income and your expenses and put it all in there. And the one thing that threw me for a loop last year is, you guys, I sold my car. <laughs> oh, I wished I wouldn't have now in retrospect. I, I didn't need to sell it. I could have probably gotten two or three more years out of it. But I thought, well, I found the car that I really liked. And so what happens is I had to 
go into the, the TurboTax and like sell off my car, <laughs> you know, like indicate like that you sold it and bring in your new vehicle and everything always takes more time than you think it's going to. Hi, Amy. Amy, I did sign you up for this class, but I'm waiting to mail your kit to add into it some other classes that are coming up later in April. So you will be getting this one. So um, happy surprise to you. Hi, Alice. Hi. It's relatively, yes, it is relatively easy to do your own taxes with TurboTax, and I have the business edition, and as long as I keep track of my income and my expenses, I mean, it's generally easy for me to do my own as well. So, yeah, <laughs> so that's, you guys, so I know Sherry Martin, I owe you a phone call back. Um, It was like, I, you know, one of those things where you can, if you leave your phone on while you're doing something that requires attention, it'll take you even three times or five times longer because you keep getting interrupted. <laughs> I'm really Kindle. So I was trying to not be interrupted yesterday. And then by the time I finished working on them, I was fried. And then Tyler got here and then he did his taxes. Um, he spent three hours, two and a half hours doing his taxes and he got his done, hit the submit button. All's good. Hello, Darla. So that's my story about yesterday, you guys. But in the interim of that long story, I got you guys pulled up on Facebook. So happy Monday um, afternoon to all of you guys. So we have the Let's Just Stamp class today. So I'll do roll call in a second. Um, as I am doing the roll call, just know that I do have some kits left. I have five, six, seven of these class cards or sets left. Um, this class is one you could get free with a minimum order that uses my host code. Uh, if you forget to put the host code in, you can always call Stampin' Up! and have them add it after the fact. Uh, so this one was free with a minimum purchase or you could pay the fee. And so I did have, how many do I have here? 25 signed up, but I set for 32. I made 32 kits. Um, so hi, Ann Bellinger. So as we're going through this, if anybody is interested in getting on the list, um, they would, I'd mail out the kits. You wouldn't get them in time for doing class today, but you'd still get them and you get the PDF tutorial for free and then you have the replay to watch. So, whew, okay, so I will do roll call really quick as long as I have the class signup sheets in my hands. We have Miss Julie Bierschbach, Sandy Wicklinder, Barb Barco, Carla Cordes, uh, Laura Sullivan, Jeannie Parker, Kathy King, hi Deborah Schultz, um, we have Ellen Brover, Amy Ponce, Barbara Moynan, Christina Bernards, Deanna Stell, Debbie Schultz. So not Deborah Schultz. <laughs> wait, wait, that is right. Debbie Schultz. Oh, you guys. So I was never really confused by Debbie and Deborah <laughs> Schultz and Schultz until Debbie Schultz told me she was confused and now I get confused. And so Debbie Schultz, you, you just said hi. And so you're on the list. <laughs> Anyways, Becky Gandolfo, Laura Wood, Tammy Steckling, Feline Mays, Carla Lake, uh, Dee Serena, Karen Stagg, Margaret Rika, Chris Niebaum, Faye Godby, and Carolyn Ketchmark. Hi, Donna. Thanks for sharing. So, <laughs> all right. So that's what we have that has already paid for or gotten the class for free. Um, hi, Deborah would be. Um, so again, I do have extra sets in case anybody is interested. This is my class that I designed the cards with Diane Bogenhagen. Thanks for sharing, and I appreciate it. Um, you guys, when you pre when you share, I show, so appreciate it. Um, it just helps you share me and my love of stamping and my passion of card making with your friends and your family. And I try to make it fun and enjoyable. So I really appreciate when you guys do share. Uh, we grow the love. Um, so. Diane and I, Diane's on my team, and we designed the cards together. Um, thanks, Alice. I appreciate it. Um, thanks, Sandy. Um, we designed them together, and Diane does. Um, Linda said she thought she signed up for it. So I guess, Linda, what I'll have to do is make a note. Let me get a post-it note really quick. And I got to think about what you signed up for. Linda, I thought you signed up maybe. I, without looking, I'll look. But I thought you had signed up for flowering fields, which is later this month. I have a lot like of people that registered for different things, but um, I'm pretty sure we had signed you up for flowering fields, which is the tulip class that's later in the month. And um, I can double check that um, when I get done with class. So, and we'll touch base, Linda. So, um, We'll check the class here. So I made myself a note, Linda. So that um, thanks for sharing, Denise. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, you, Debbie Schultz said that um, she can be Deborah if that helps. <laughs> I love it. Make it easy for me, you guys. <laughs> Hi, Kathy from West Bend. So Linda, we'll get back to you afterwards. Um, I know there was some back and forth about which class, and I 
I'm not sure. We'll have to look at our notes, right? That's why we, um, it's always great to have correspondence in written form because we can go back and um, um, check our communications. And the perfect example, hi, Carmen Melendez, was Carmen Melendez. When she signed up for game night, her numbers were in an email and I could go back and check really quick and it was awesome. So, all right. Thanks for sharing, Deborah. I appreciate it. So Linda, we'll double check. Um, so this is a class that I do with Linda, uh, Linda, with Diane Bogenhagen. And Diane does the in-person version, which is coming up on the 19th of April. So if there's anybody local in the Fond du Lac or surrounding area that'd like to do this class with Diane, she still has space available. She's also doing the class on, on the 20th at 1 p.m. Uh, and then I'm doing it live now. Um, she kits her own stuff for in person and I kit my own. So I know that I still have kits available for class today in case anybody's interested. Um, and the, the video that I did that's referenced in the description of this video was the very first Let's Just Stamp that I did live back in July of last year. And if you're new to stamping or a beginner and are looking for some more advice or help you should definitely check out that video. And then you can always reach out to me if you need more help or if you have questions about what you need to get started. When you start off stamping, the the, big, the biggest thing that people ask is, well, what do I need? Hi, Marsha Long from Texas. Like, what are the things to get started? And you guys, I've been stamping for 20 years. And so it's awesome when somebody asks me that question in an in-person class and there's a relatively new person, maybe like three to six months along, um, and they they pipe up and they say, "Well, I just started, and I was able to figure out that I you know, through the thought of you know talking to other people and through the process of talking." Hi, Melanie Foy, like, and all of a sudden it sounds like, "Well, this is what you need. Like a bone folder is awesome to have. It's not required, but it's awesome to have. Having a couple pair of scissors that are really good for a ribbon, especially, and then a paper one, and then I even have one for glue." and what types of adhesives are good to use. And so that video I talk about like the ins and the outs of becoming a stamper and the big, the basics kinda. Hi France, so I always w welcome people to, if they're new to me and new to stamping, to go back and refer to that video. And that's why I always copy and paste the link into the description now so that it's easy for you to find it. Um, I, I have not been a beginner for a very long time and I uh, am probably at the point where I, I design my cards um, very, um, I would have to say not beginner-ish cards. So when we do this class, we try to really keep it like geared towards beginners. Hi, Laura Sullivan, thanks for sharing. Um, we try to gear it towards people who are just starting out, meaning that it would require basically one stamp set and some inks. Uh, because if you're getting your card kits from me, I can't do any stamping prior, uh, and you really might not even have a machine to do die cutting or embossing. So we gear these cards at simple but really pretty cards because by adding layers and ribbon and embellishments you can really doctor up your cards and so um, they may not look like beginner cards but in our eyes we think that they are more beginner cards because they don't have a lot of extra um, the die cutting and embossing which is something you might not have when you first start off so we want to show people that you don't need a lot to make some really pretty cards so um so we, we um we gear these cards around one stamp set. So next month, it's the Paradise Palms. Hi, Sue Thomas. Um, and we actually have them done. So I'm gonna show them to you now because I might forget to show them to you later. Um, today, what you guys, what we're making, just so you know, is we're doing the Flowering Rain Boots, which are these three cards. Um, yes, Donna, Mystery Night is next week, Monday, um, April 18th. And Kelly and I worked on the card and it will be, um, clue number one will be published today or if not tomorrow, it'll, it'll be done in the next 24 hours. So um, clue number one, it will be ready. She sent it to me and I have to proofread it and make sure it's right in terms of all the papers there or <laughs> sizes are correct. But yes, it's next week, Monday, the 18th at 6 p.m. Um, the Where the post will be is if you guys, always on my website, cardsbycrispy.com, if you go to the calendar of events, is April 18th, or once I have the clue one done, you guys, there'll be an event created on Facebook once I figure out how to do it, because I went to go add the MS benefit to Facebook. I don't know where the create event button is. They made it go away, and I'm not happy about it. Hi, Cindy, so I'm wasting my time on Facebook learning the new system. <laughs> Anyways, so you guys, this is what we got coming up next month, and I feel like I already have 20 people signed up 
for this class next month. Hi, Lizzie Lister from the UK. Uh, so this is featuring Paradise Palms. Again, no die cutting, no embossing. And um, this one's a little bit of a fun fold. So just so you guys know, this is the let's just stamp and then the inside it looks like that. So this is for May. We pulled together um, the sets from the new annual catalog that we're gonna use. Hi, Patsy Roberts. Um, so these are May. And then we figured out for June, we're gonna stick with a carryover stamp set called Painted Poppies. And we're gonna pair that with the Peaceful Poppies. So June is gonna be the poppies, three cards featuring those two stamp sets. One has words and one has flowers. Um, July is Wilderness Awaits, which is also a carry set, carryover set. We really didn't feature it much. So we're gonna use Wilderness Awaits and get you guys some guyish cards. Uh, masculine cards for uh, July. And then August is going to be a set called Potted Geraniums that is brand new in the annual catalog. We don't even have it yet, but so that's what we've got on the docket for this Let's Just Stamp class uh, for the next um, few few months. Yay. So um, yeah, so yeah, you guys, whenever you want to sign up for a class, if you're newer to me, all I got to do is get you on my class list. You, It looks like this. Literally, you guys, I'm a paper person. I keep a spreadsheet like this and I try to use purple and pink ink as much as possible because it looks prettier. <laughs> Sometimes I throw in that light blue, but ultimately all I need to do is get you on that list. And when it comes to placing an order, it has to be in the month the class is held or it could be the next month or, or you can pay the fee whenever it works. And so if you don't have an order or the fee paid or figured out by the time I go to mail the kits, I'll be calling you like, what are you, what are you planning to do? <laughs> so no, um, the P so Patsy, you're asking about a PDF for May, June, July, and August. No, <laughs> the PDFs are not created until like literally five to six days before I have a class, you guys. Uh, it's a lot of work to create a PDF tutorial in my head. Like it takes about an hour to two hours and sometimes even longer. By the time you write it all, get the pictures and then publish it like to the people who attend are attending class. So like the PDF for this class, I mailed it out last week, maybe Thursday or Wednesday. Um, I always do, you no, Donna, you never need to sign up for mystery card. You just show up, show up when it is in my newsfeed. Um, so Patsy, yep, definitely can put you down for those classes. I'll watch for your email to come in and tell me that again. I really appreciate that. Um, the PDF for you guys, when I send the PDF, it's generally for a Thursday class. I send it out on Monday. Okay. And if it's like a Monday class, like today, I think I tried to send it out last Wednesday or two. I think I sent it out last Wednesday. Um, sometimes if life is super busy, the PDF will come two days before. Uh, so it's, I don't ever try to keep it like, like a day or the day before, but if there's a lot going on, you guys, I had like 13 classes this month and six or seven of them require PDF tutorials. So it's a lot to write two PDF tutorials in one week. Um, oh, Patsy, yes. So you're talking the class schedule. Yes, you guys, if you go to my um, my calendar of events at cardsbycrispy.com, I have my whole skeleton calendar out there through December. Once the cards are designed is when I actually put the cover photo on with the close-ups of the cards. Uh, so yeah, you could go and see all of April right now, or I should say the rest of it, you can see almost all of May. I only have one card. I have two classes left to design for May, the Hey Sports Fan and the Memories and More class. Don't have those two yet, but planning to work on them this week. That's my goal. So, all right. Yes. Yeah, so you guys, my calendar is out there. I just might not always have the cards designed <laughs> right away. So, okay. I think that covered a lot. You're very welcome, Patsy. I think that covered a lot. Uh, so, when we're going through the cards today, I'm going to try to talk as much as I can to kind of teach you guys, especially if you're new. Um, I'm curious, out of everybody who's watching right now, how many of you probably started stamping the last three months? I would call that new, like even six months. Are you are you relatively new and you're really hoping to learn something? Or are you, give me hearts if you're an avid crafter, you've been stamping, crafting for a while. Um, and then give me the likes if you're relatively new. I want to see what we've, who we've got watching here. Um, yes, Melanie, the Memories and More is for the hand penned. Um, it's set for May 23rd in person and May 25th online. Um, I'm planning for about 30. I have 25 signed up right now. Um, I'm thinking that five more will sign up. Oh my gosh, lots of hearts. Yay. Okay. So you guys, the hand penned, if you were on the fence about that, um, make sure you get to me right away to get my, your name on the list because I need to buy that product um, now before it retires um, and goes out of stock. So 
All right, you guys, I got a lot of avid crafters or longtime crafters and maybe just a few that are relatively new. So um, I will try to cater to both uh, and we'll go get started in our class. Um, Patsy, yep, you're on the list for the um, hand pen. I'm pretty sure you are. It was, um, you're not, yeah, you are. You're number 19. Haha. <laughs> yes, Patsy, you're on the list. So um, if anybody... I've got a bunch of you. So I have 22 people for the online class and three for in-person. So that's 25. And I'm thinking like I'm going to prep for either 30 or 32. So, but I really need, oh, Carmen's been stamping for 10 years. Yay. What I really need to do is know who is going to be participating or wants to, so I can make sure I can order the product for you because that stuff is retiring. Okay. All right. That's a lot of jibber jabber. So we're going to start stamping you guys. So I'm going to flip the camera down. And I'm trying to figure out which one we want to start with. I think we're going to start with this one first. So when you guys got your kits, this is Amy's. I mentioned to Amy earlier. She placed an order and she's going to be getting some card classes from me because it was a really large order. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Um, so this is one of the card kits that Amy's going to be getting. So when you get a class from me, isn't the hand pen DSP sold out? It, you know what? I'm not worried about the DSP, Deborah. I'm worried about the memories and more note cards and envelopes and the card pack. This class that I'm talking about for Memories and More is not relating to the DSP at all. I don't pull in any DSP. So I'm okay if the DSP is sold out, which is fine. It's the other that I'm worried about. <laughs> so, um, so, um, Patsy, 20 years. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So this is what you guys get in a kit from me. So sometimes people ask me, what do I get in a kit from you? If you're new to stamping or you're new to me, um, I don't hold back, um, on things like, I will make little bows. So like, for example, for this one, you guys, in your, hi, Elaine Rebeck. For this one, you guys got a piece of a quarter sheet of basic white. That's gonna be for your flowers, your flowers, your boots, your flowers, and your stems. So this white piece you got in your kit, it goes for all of yours. And that's why it's not in, a, in any of the envelopes. You guys get envelopes for me. I know other demonstrators don't provide envelopes. I do provide envelopes. I feel like you need an envelope for your card. And so like this is an example of a kit you'll get. I make your little teeny tiny bow. Do you see that? I make your little bows for you when it's a class that is like this. Um, if it's a product-based class where you get a roll of ribbon, I'm not opening up everybody's rolls of ribbon and <laughs> making your bows for you, but if it's a class where you get one little bow and a card, I do make it. And then what else you'll get are the little gems. I do cut them apart like this so you'll get your three little gems that you need to put on your card and then you get all the pieces that you need and I don't hold back on pieces like and layers you guys for those of you that have watched me or know me personally and have been stamping with me for a while you know that I love layers I absolutely just don't hold back like on this one you guys this is an example of what you get you get five diamonds and you get all your designer paper was already cut for you. If you ever see a little red line on like this, that's from my stick that where my blade cut, cuts into like a, 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 it's a red stick and it's plastic and it's, it's buffer so it doesn't get hurt. Um, so like you'll see that sometimes, but look at this. We did have double matting, your ribbons in there. So this is what you guys get when you get a card class from me. You get everything that you need to make the card and then adding on a little bit of stamping. And I've been kind of switching gears on the designing to not use a lot of stamps per se, but a lot of die cutting um, and embossing. And this one's specifically using this stamp set right here, Flowering Rain Boots. So this one does use, we, we try to pull in all the focal images and the sentiments as much as we can when we do a class like this. So the first card we're gonna do is the one, the kit that the first one I looked at, and you're gonna have to, um, so I put mine in like little clear envelopes. So um, mine look a little different. You'll pull yours out. And this one's a fun fold. So when you open it up, it's a flap that goes that way, a flap that goes that way, and then you have your inside. And I didn't want all these half inch strips of paper left in my drawer for the next 15 years. <laughs> so I, we put them on the inside. So instead of a focal image on the inside of this, we put a little strip of paper. So all the designer series paper for these three cards, you guys, it comes from the set Sweet as a Peach. And so we pulled in that. Um, so we're gonna start off and I, um, I'm i not sure what I did. I know you guys will have, <laughs> you will have this sheet. So I have to figure out what I did in my kit here. So um, I know by the magic of TV, I already fussy cut my little flowers out. 
but so you should have a little bow. You should have your rhinestones. It has been told to me <laughs> that like, I think it was Kathy Groves that said, when she pulls out a card kit, she makes sure her desk is clear and that she's got space because she, you don't wanna lose pieces, right? Thanks for sharing, Amy. So it's good to pull out your pieces in a space where you don't have a lot of stuff going on. So you have your little strip for your inside. You have a piece of white that is for your outside mat. And then you have your designer series paper with the polka dots, which that will go on. You have this arm. This is like, a, I call it an arm. It's scored in the middle. And just take your bone folder. This is where you wanna burnish it. So you guys, when you're new to stamping or making cards, it's very intimidating to cut paper. So um, you do wanna get yourself a nice little cutter that allows you to um, cut it straight and that you don't get like a, a rolled edge or um, like a fuzzy edge. You wanna make sure your blade is nice and sharp. Uh, bone folder is great because it helps to burnish. I know other people will sometimes use their glue. Some people will use other tools, but I do love the bone folder. It's only $7. I've had mine for probably 15 years. You can tell it's like, <laughs> it's got love on it. <laughs> okay, you have a piece of white that's gonna be for here. And then you have this. This piece is for your inside. And then this piece is for right here. So because a lot of this is able to get glued, I think well, let's get some pieces glued together. We're not gonna glue this one because if we wanna stamp it and we don't like it, then we can flip it over. But there are some things that we can glue. And you guys, I am a person that, as long as I'm opening up the glue thing, the bottle, I like to glue a couple things at once. So we're gonna glue that and this, and then there's this white one. So there's nothing that needs to get stamped on this white one. Thanks for sharing, Gloria. Hi, by the way. Hi, Mitzi Stanley. Okay. For those of you guys that are joining um, just now, I did mention at the beginning of this class that I do have uh, maybe six kits left of this class. Um, I've learned to overmake by a little bit. Um, sometimes they're gone by the time class is um, held, and sometimes they're still there. Uh, but I do have seven. So in case anybody's watching this and they're like, oh, I do need to buy some Stampin' Up! products. Let me put an order in as long as you use my host code, you guys. <laughs> the reason why I was two minutes late today is because I realized that my normal piece of paper that says Cards by Christine, their host code, the phone number, I, I think it was like used and abused. Um, and uh, Patsy, if I didn't read off your name, I don't think you got a kit. <laughs> so... Um, I don't think I read off your name, if I'm not mistaken. You, I don't think you signed up for this class, Patsy. So, um, so we can definitely get you on the list. If you would confirm that, that would be awesome. Okay, so I so saw my cards by Christine with my host code, all that stuff is gone. <laughs> I, like, I looked through the garbage to pull it out, and I couldn't find it. And I went to print, and my printer says that it's got an error because something is in the queue. So, yeah. All right, so, uh, oh yeah, you missed the roll call then. Okay, yep, so Patsy, if you want to, now you want it, ha ha, <laughs> that's how it goes. Okay, so this will get glued right here. And you wanna make sure your fold is on the right-hand side because what happens then is this will fold up or flip up and that folds down. So um, the stamp I have on the outside is Live Life in Full Bloom. And that is part of the set. There's um, Rain or Shine, I'm here for you, and our friendship is naturally beautiful. And we chose to go with Live Life in Full Bloom. It was more um, it was more universal for these. Uh, there's another one here, Our Friendship is Naturally Beautiful. Um, but Elaine, I just saw your message too. So you guys, just so that I don't overcommit to people, um, I'm going to write Elaine and Patsy down here so that I've got you guys marked down. Okay, so with this strip... Um, hello, Joan from Washington State. This strip goes on your inside here. It was just a little half incher that was kind of a straggler at the end and it got cut down to four. If I were you, one of the things that I always try to teach people is I always stamp before assembling. If you stamp this and you don't like the way it looks, you can flip it over and try again. So before gluing this, I would stamp it. But this one says live life in full bloom on the outside. You could definitely just write a love note on the inside and not stamp anything else. But for those at home, um, Laura, no, I don't think you were on the list for this one either. So conf 
firm. Laura Wood was on the list, but not, not Laura Sullivan. So Laura, um, if you would like this one to just confirm here really quick, I'll try to watch for the comment to come in. Um, oh, Deborah's from Washington. Yay, we got some Washington representing in the house here. Hi, Betty Ray. Okay, so I, I kind of looked at which way my flowers were going, you guys. That's important thing about designer series paper. Hi, Ethel King. You want to look at which way the like the pattern is going. So when I glued this down, I looked at them going this way, and otherwise it might have been looking like it was going upside down. So because I decided not to stamp a sentiment on here, I'm going to go ahead and glue this on the inside. Oh, perfect, Laura. I'll get you added to the list right now so that I make sure I don't forget. Um, so now I have four left. You guys, this is how it works. <laughs> my, my mom always just, she always says, well, by the end of class, you'll be gone. Like, cause I always say how many I've left before class starts. And she's like, you know, they're going to be gone by the time class is done. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they usually are. Okay. So we've got our base pretty much set. So you guys, these are photopolymer stamps. So there's two different types of stamps in the kind of stamping up world, um, photopolymer and red rubber. So photopolymer is a completely see-through. I honestly prefer red rubber and I don't, I don't, I just, I never really, you can see completely through it. It just makes it so easy. Um, but when you do use photopolymer stamps, it is always recommended, or I recommend that you use like, um, this is a foam mat, Stampin' Up sells these, they're piercing mats, they were $5. Um, they, the price might change with the new catalog, I haven't looked that far ahead, but at the current moment, they're $5. And that helps to provide a little extra cushion. Thanks for sharing, Betty Ray, I appreciate it. Um, being on the fence about a class becomes wanting the class when we watch the videos. And that's exactly it. Um, and so I always tease because the people who watch the video from the very beginning while I'm live, they basically get the first dibs because generally that's when I hear that they want them. And by the time it's sad because like two days after class or three days after class, somebody's watching the replay and they reach out and they say, you had a couple sets available. I'm like, yeah, they're gone now. <laughs> That's how it goes. So you guys, this is smoky slate. And what I'm doing is stamping this water pot or the watering can. I'm With these foam pads, you don't have to squish really hard. You just lightly tap. You get plenty of ink. You can see I hardly had to squish on there and I got it looking really nice. Hmm. Penny, yes, you are lucky because you got that game. Was it, I think, game night last week? Um, I had four people reach out to me after game night was done and ask for the game night cards with the daisies because they were just amazing. Okay, so there's our watering can. And then what I have here is Calypso Coral. And the stamp set or the sentiment is the one that says live life in full bloom. So when you get a set of Stampin' Up! stamps, they come in this case like this. They're, it's like a CD case and all of them are in here. And then you just need to get yourself some blocks and you can interchange. So like I, for class today, I had both of these on the same block, but for when I go to use it, I take it off because I really want to be able to see straight down. So what I'm seeing here is I stamped my rain can or my watering can a little closer to the left than I really would like to have it. So I'm actually going to flip it over. And I wondered if I did that. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start over and put that sentiment where I want it, down here. And I'm working left to right versus the other way I was right to left. And so now I'm gonna try to put this, thanks for sharing, Mitzi. Thanks for sharing, Arliss. Now I'm gonna put my watering can where I want it. So had I done that first, I known I would have put it a little more to the right. It would have worked, it would have just been more squishy. Okay, so we got those two things. Now, you guys, and I'm not going to do it because I've already, this is Amy's piece. <laughs> so you have this scrap of white. It's literally a, a quarter sheet of design, um, white paper, basic white. What I would do if I were you guys at home, you're going to take your coral ink and you're going to ink up a little flower here and you're going to stamp it. So there's some extra stamp right here. So you're going to stamp this away in the top corner. You know, you might not need this whole piece of paper, but I wasn't going to guess on how much you did or didn't need. I just, I knew that this would be enough. Hi, Shireen from South Africa. I knew that this would be enough for, for all the cards. So you're going to take the flowers and stamp them. Now, two things. If you are a beginner and you don't have the dies, you're going to have to take your scissors and we call it fussy cutting. You're going to take it and you're going to cut all the way around them. And I literally did fussy cut this. 
Um, now, if you have a die cutting machine at home and you have these dies, uh, you could take and um, die cut them with this as the outline of it. So you wouldn't have to fussy cut. So this is a set that you can buy it singly or you can buy it as a bundle and you save 5%. Nope, you save 10%, which is about $5 when you buy it as a bundle. Okay, so we're pretending that I stamped mine on there and, mm -hmm, and then I'm good. Um, so if you did want to stamp something else on the inside, you guys could do that. But that's it for these inks. So it was Smoky Slate. And these are how Stampin' Up! inks come, you guys. When you shut them, it flips the ink pad upside down. And that's how you store it, with the ink pad upside down, which allows for the ink to reside at the top surface of the ink pad for when you open it up. So they design them that way. Uh, you guys, when you get your ink pads, you may not know that there are stickers on the back or I should say on the bottom, and they're the stickers, and I use them all the way around. I put the English one in the front to me because that's what I know how to read, and then I put all the other ones around the edge, and then I even put one on the inside right there. Um, I did a Tip Tuesday, or Kelly did a Tip Tuesday on um, doing that to your ink pad. Okay, so by the magic of TV, this is cut out, and we are gonna set this on here. Um, there's nothing else that needs to go on this, so what we're gonna do is adhere this. So. When I say glue, you guys, I'm partial to the liquid glue. I've converted a lot of people from what we call tape runners to liquid glue. These things get gummed up on me. I don't care how good they are. Mine get gummed up on me. And, oh, you know what? So I glued this flat, but it looks like I popped this one up with dimensionals. So when I say adhere, adhere is a personal preference. In either way, it is not wrong. So in this case, I've already prepped it with a lot of liquid glue. I'm gonna glue it flat. If you are partial to wanting it to be popped up, it adds just a little element of height, is what it is. Um, oh yeah, so Darla, I can sign you up. So this class is $15 plus $5 for shipping. So it ends up being $20 mailed. Um, and otherwise, it's free with a $45 order using my host code. So if you're looking to get Stampin' Up! products, you could always um, use my host code and get it for free. So you guys, when I say adhere, adhere could be dimensionals, it could be liquid glue, it could be tape runner. Um, yes, <laughs> Sandy Wicklander, <laughs> I convinced her. Um, this is $4 for the, the thing of glue, and you can get a lot of cards with that, especially if you don't use a lot of adhesive, or like if you don't squish really hard. Okay. So when it comes to this little flower though, you guys, I'm looking for white dimensionals. Let's see if I have some here, perfect. So when it comes to the flower, I like to have things flat where they're coming out of things and I like to have them popped out where they look cool raised. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pop up the top of my flowers and I'm going to glue the bottom flat. So by putting, so never be afraid to put d different types of adhesive on the backs of your cards. So in this case, I popped up the top with dimensionals and then I'm gonna put this down here. So Darla, just let me know if you'd like me to hold the set of cards for you. Um, we can figure out the payment part and or ordering part later. Just if you wanna mention to me that you want it, I'll put your name on the list. Okay, so we put that like that. And now for you guys that got the kits from me, <clears throat> you got this cute, adorable little bow. And so how I put bows on, oh, Linda Grady, yes, you owed me a note, um, which class, because you placed your order. So <clears throat> with that being said, Linda, I'm going to make sure you get this one. And you gave me an order, so I have you marked paid with an order. So <laughs> I'll pop it in the mail. All right, so then I use my ribbon scissors, and I like to cut the tails so they are nice and fresh. Oh, hi, Nan from Nova Scotia. Woohoo! hoo um, And Darla, I will add your name to the list as well. Okay. So, almost done with this one, you guys. So, Darla, you guys, look at that. We're down to two. That's just how it goes. Okay. So, that's the ribbon. Now, you guys, in your kit, you would have some champagne rhinestones. Um... I put in a big one and two small ones probably. So I have a big one here. Um, I do love to use, if you guys are new and you don't have fingernails, like some, 
<laughs> my nails have gotten long, so it's almost getting time to trim them, but fingernails work nice. But if you don't have fingernails, there's this take your pick tool, which when you go to get your rhinestone, you push it and then it sticks to the putty end. So you have to push it and then lift up and then it, it stays on the putty end and it allows you to put it exactly where you want it. So that has been a lifesaver for a lot of people. It comes with a pokey tool on one end and then a spatula. And then it also comes with a die brush adapter and then the putty end here. So um, it comes in very handy. So the other thing we like to do is Stella. Stella is a glittery pen. Okay, so the thing was with this kind of stamp, if you go to Stella this, it might bleed some of the detail and you might lose it. And like for the flowers here, it will make the white area become a little pinky and that's okay if that's um, a look you're going for. And I'm gonna be okay with it. So Stella just adds a little, a bit of glitter and it's hard to see it in the camera, but if you look in the chamber here, this barrel right where my naughty finger is pointing, <laughs> there's glitter in there. And so that is gonna come out onto the card and give it a little glittery look. So. Um, awesome, Kathy, you just got the stamp set. It's a really cool stamp set. Um, is it carrying over to the new annual catalog? I can't remember. I don't think it is, but I can't remember for sure. All right, so that is card number one. A very easy card, you guys. This is a cool layout. So when you're looking at this layout, you have your bottom piece scored here and then a, a classic mat and then an arm, so super cool. If, and then whatever, so designer paper to accent, anything could go here. So let's say you don't have this stamp set, but you have other stamp sets. You could stamp whatever you want on this little square if you get this kit from me, made it very versatile. Oh, Marie says it is carrying over. No, Carol says it's not in the new catalog. <laughs> you guys are confusing me. Deborah says no. <laughs> All right, Marie, I'd be curious to see how you know it's carrying over. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, you guys, I was like, is it? I, I, and I literally, you guys, I did it. I finally sat down last night on my couch in my house, not in here. I sat on my couch with my blanket on my lap with a little cocktail, and I looked through the entire catalog twice, and it was so fun just to sit and look at the samples. And I, you know what, the catalog, I've had it for over a week now, a week and a half maybe, and I haven't had the moment to do that. So I was so nice just to sit and relax and look at the catalog. It's always fun getting a new catalog. So, okay. So one card done. All right, Patsy said it's not in the new catalog. Okay. So next card, you guys. So let's say this one's done. We're gonna clean our stamps. So when it comes to cleaning stamps, for those that are new, this is a chamois. Stampin' Up sells them. They're $8. Um, the cases are sold by Stampin' Up 2 in packs of four. Um, if you don't need all three, you know, you only need one for your chamois, but when people come to class or they're transporting their stuff, they put their cards in these cases to transport them so they don't get wrecked. So that's cool. Um, so we're gonna clean this guy. So the chamois, you can spray it with Stampin' Mist to help it like have that mist in here. Um, you can run it underneath the water to keep it hydrated. Um, middle of the page. Marie, let's see. Oh, I can't open up the catalog, you guys. So Marie is saying, you guys, page 128, number five, the middle of the page. So I'm looking for you guys. Like that would be awesome because it's a really cool set. I can't open up the catalog in front of you. And my catalog here... <laughs> I got, um, my second one came in the mail and it's all, it's still in plastic wrap, you guys. So, okay. All right. So I have the new Kelly in my lap and just checked out the stamps. So Patsy, you should check page 128 per Marie. <clears throat> all right. So there's one card done. We'll do this one next. All right. So this one, so these both have pear pizzazz as the base color. So um, don't be confused when you open up your envelope. You're going to want to look for the one that has the blue. Oh, <laughs> Patsy says that, um, Marie, you're referring to um, the Stella pen on page 128. What we were asking about was the flowering rain boots. So maybe the flowering rain boots isn't there. <laughs> oh, Deirdre says it's not either. Okay, so I think we figured out the... the um, the issue. Uh, Stella Pen is definitely in the catalog. It's item number 141897, $8. Um, and the following rain boots is not. <laughs> okay, cool. 
I think we're back on track. So next, you guys, make sure you pull out the kit that has the pear pizzazz and it has the blue in it, okay? So this is a normal card base. So those that are newer to Stampin' Up! or card making in general, when you get a sheet of paper, it's eight and a half by 11. And when you cut it in half, you get two card bases. <laughs> no problem, Marie. Um, so you get two card bases, right? So two out of one sheet scored in the middle is four and a quarter. All right. So that's a card base, a, a, like a, a normal size card base. And thanks for sharing, Bonnie Kelly. <laughs> I'm glad we could laugh about that. <laughs> All right. So traditional card mat right here card base. All right. In your kit, you guys, you will have three of the iridescent rhinestones. You'll have the teeniest, tiny, cute little bow again. It's adorbsy at using linen thread. So you've got that made by me. You'll also have another piece of linen thread, which is right through the middle. You'll have a piece of the pool party sheer right through the middle um, here. Uh, you'll have your sacrificial lamb. So you guys, I call it a sacrificial lamb because the only purpose is to make the ribbon look better. If you would put, and I'll show you the difference, why that's there. Um, you have this piece right here for the mat in the front. By the magic of TV, mine's already done. But remember, if we go back to Amy's piece right here, you guys only stamped one set. You're going to stamp another one on this white mat here. Uh, you have two designer papers. They are not the same width. The bottom polka dot -y is wider than the top. And we did that because we wanted to see the blue border around the top here, but we didn't want to see it down here. So that was intentional. And that will go on a blue mat. And then you have a white mat and then another blue mat for your inside. Whenever you're cutting with like a guillotine cutter, sometimes you will get this little bit of hangage on the side here. If you guys ever get that, all you have to do is take your scissors and snip it off if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother you and you don't notice it, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> but if you see it and it bothers you, just cut it off. Um, so that's a basic white on a blue, bomby blue mat. So these are what you have in your kit for pieces. So let's get glue happy a little bit because let's get some pieces put together. Um, so we're going to glue these two pieces on. So here's where the peaches come in, you guys can see. It's awesome. So we, when we were pu pulling out designer paper that we could use, we picked out our pieces first, and then that's what dictated basically what color combinations we wanted to use for our mats and our bases. So I'm going to actually glue this one down first. And you guys, there is a pattern to your paper. Always be careful that you not do not glue it upside down. You want to make sure that you glue it right way up. <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, so there's the one. And then you have your polka dotties on the bottom. Remember, they go left to right. Now you're like, oh my goodness, she cut our paper too short. It doesn't meet. You know what? That's okay. That was intentional as well. Even if they had met your ribbon, you would see the design through it, right? You can see the design. So that's where the sacrificial lamb comes in. So if you guys think about this designer paper, this is cut at three inches and this one is cut at two. That was very intentional because a piece of paper that's designer is 12 inches. Had you cut this at more than three inches, you wouldn't have gotten four columns. And had you cut this at more than two, you wouldn't have gotten six columns out of a 12 by 12. So we intentionally knew that we were gonna have ribbon and use this hat it was if you didn't have sheer ribbon you could have used whatever ribbon to cover it up but because it's sheer ribbon you definitely need the sacrificial lamb and when you do that you are never the wiser that it's not meeting in the middle so that's where this blue little strip it's three aces um three aces haha <laughs> three eighths <laughs> did i say three aces yes there's a bar downtown called three aces i think um but three eighths inch wide which is pretty much how wide the ribbon is and and it goes to four inches which is the width of the card and I'm trying to line it up with my polka dots so that I can see my polka dots very nicely okay perfect so now you guys got where the sacrificial lamb always used by me a lamb 
sacrificial that is, when, <laughs> don't tell Kelly that, her last name is Lamb. Um, uh, and I do that so that you don't see the seam. But now we have um, some tear and tape. So tear and tape is another must in my stamp in my toolbox. Tear and tape is a double-sided tape that you can just rip. You don't have to have it on a tape dispenser like this. It's like just regular scotch tape. I don't generally use that a lot, but um, I do use the tear and tape a lot. And so this now will get, and I always look at it from the front. So when I'm putting this on, I never try to like not look at the front while I put this on. I always am looking at it from the front, holding it, knowing that the tape is back there. And then I can confidently put those ends behind, all right? And it caught them. So as long as you have it in the right spot, <laughs> it comes with lamb in their last name also. Yes, so, yep. So I'm putting another piece of tear and tape here, you guys. And that is going, if you see on this card, there's one more little slip of linen thread. It helped to just add it, like, and it was an afterthought for us. We put this little bow on here, and we're like, we want more. <laughs> and so we're like, oh, let's run a piece of linen thread right down the middle. And so, again, from the front, I'm eyeballing it, flipping my tail over, and going like that. Now... You can choose to be done with it there, but I personally want to put one more piece of tear and tape. Chicago Patsy said they're from the Chicago area. Yep. Um, I don't know where Kelly's. I'd have to think about where her husband's family is from. I know they live in this area by us, but they could be relatives. I chose to put another piece of tear and tape over the top just so that the, um, the linen thread doesn't want to sneak out. Okay, so... There's my liquid glue on the back of this mat, not dropping it. And then that's gonna go on our card base. Pear and Balmy Blue are so pretty together. And when you have this designer paper that has both of them on with these flowers, is so pretty. So there's our mat and our base put together. So what do we have next? We have to stamp a sentiment in, okay. I will be honest with you, <laughs> I didn't grab it. We originally started with pear pizzazz and it was too light. So we switched it to old olive. Old olive looked better. So I gotta grab old olive. It is um, on my table, hang on. Old olive looked a little sharper because it was darker. Whereas pear pizzazz just didn't do it justice. So we have here live a life in full bloom and a pot. So I'm starting with the sentiment this time, you guys. And I know exactly where it needs to go. And then I'm going to put my pot in. So you guys can see what's awesome about photopolymer stamps is you can see exactly where it needs to go. Where when you're using the red rubber stamps... It's kind of close, but sometimes if they're not on your blocks properly, then they might be crooked. So that one's done. And now we need to do our pot. Hi, Patricia Piscopio. All right, so I'm going to clean this right away. So you guys, I had a card buffet over the weekend. And all my stamps are still put on the blocks because I've been trying to get to do a little Facebook Live in my VIP group on the card, and what I wanna do is make the card buffet cards for everybody. Because they were not, uh, it wasn't part of an online class. I don't ever do card buffets as online classes, oh my goodness. Oh, they, that would be um, a lot of pre-planning and thinking ahead, and when I do my card buffet, they die cut, they stamp and then they die cut, because I'm very specific about, let's see, this is gonna go closer to the bottom. Like, so let's show you guys. This was one of my card buffet cards. It's very specific. Like the tiger, if you don't have this tiger set, it's really hard to make this card look exactly like this. And so I left it for card buffet, which was in person only. But in my VIP group, I'm gonna show you guys how I made the card. So I'm gonna do a little extra special perks for my VIP group um, this week. I'm gonna do two cards every day. Um, I'm going to try to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That is my goal. That's always a goal. It's always a good lofty goal. So on the inside here, you guys, I've got a pot. So let's grab our little white piece here 
And we're gonna put, you know, so now if you're gonna stamp the pot first, you have to think about your flowers, right? So remember your flowers, you can't just stamp the pot really close to the right edge because then your flowers will be partly off. So I'm gonna probably just use this as a guide to kind of know it needs to be over this far. And if you're over a little bit more to the left, it's okay. But I'm thinking that that will work. And we're gonna stamp the flowers there next. So that was the crumb, oh, that was Sahara sand. Um, I really think I use crumb cake here, but I, I accidentally grabbed Sahara sand. Sahara and crumb cake are very versatile. The like crumb cake at second strength is very similar to Sahara sand. So I didn't even realize I grabbed that color. So uh, let's clean this little dude. And our flower power is in balmy blue. Thanks, Cindy. All right, so balmy blue. And you guys, this is where now if you have your little sheet that I gave you, you're going to stamp one more of these. Fussy cut it out or die cut it. But you ultimately need it looking like, like that at the end. Okay. So but I'm going to stamp one in the inside. All right, so that's it for the balmy blue. And I'm gonna clean this right away. I think that's it for this flower. So we can take him off and we'll prep it with this one for next. So that's what, when you first start up stamping, you need to get yourself some blocks. Different size blocks are perfect because if you have a bigger stamp, it won't fit on the smaller and you wanna use smaller stamps on smaller blocks. That's just how it works. So, um, so like, the boots are on a, a D block. So, all right, let's see what we got. We're done with this and, all right, so we can glue. Okay, now this is popped up. I do see that. So I'm gonna grab my dimensionals and prep this piece with, I would think when it comes to dimensionals, that's always a personal preference to you guys. Um, I don't like saggy middles, so I will always put one in the middle. I will not just put them on the four corners because then there's nothing to support the middle. So that's prepped and ready to go. Uh, the flowers, the same thing happened with the flowers. We're gonna do the same thing that we did last card where we're gonna put, I'm gonna make sure we got the top and the bottom. So that's, <laughs> you can see here, I, we, <sighs> we went round and round with this card, figuring out the right color combination. <sighs> so we started off with pink. <laughs> All right, so. We've got the top is gonna to be popped up and the bottom is gonna be glued flat. So there's a bottom that needs to come off of there. All right, so prepping the glue, so a little along the bottom here and then this white mat. I generally go around the edges. Sometimes I'll put a slash through the middle. Sometimes I'll do a little loop-de-loop -loop. Um, I know a gal in class, Lori, she just draws little lines in like six different spots. <laughs> like this is how she'll do it. And, and there's no wrong way how you glue the back, but she will go like this, like this. I've watched her and I'm like, okay, well, if that's what works for you, it takes me a lot longer to pick up the glue, put it down, squeeze, unsqueeze, where I just do a line. So, all right, so this is our inside. Hi, Deb Norman. So, very springy, you guys. All right, then this, it's off to the left slightly. So, I'm gonna prep that, like, right there. And then this is ready to go. And that's gonna go... Now, if you are a centery kind of person, where you want it centered, you could have centered it. But I liked seeing the ribbon on the side here in, like, more fullness. And then you guys have your incy tinsy little linen thread polka dot bikini bow. And what I like to do, because it's such a little bow, I'll take my glue dot and I'll roll it so it's thinner and then put it right where I know the bow needs to go. And then I will stick it to the bow. And then I'll pull my little baby tails down so they're going the right way. And then trim your ends like that. So, oh, so my mom was laying out all the card kit pieces for this class while I was making all the little baby bows. All right, we're not quite done, but we're really close. We have some iridescent rhinestones. I am beyond ecstatic that these amazing embellishments are carrying over to the new annual catalog. So 
They are by far my favorite in the mini catalog. And so there's three different sizes. The biggest, I think were too big. I think I gave everybody, if I'm not mistaken, I gave, there's like a goo ball right there and I want it. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna show it who's boss because it sticks to things. Somebody got picked up a gem and the goo stayed and then that sticks. So, all right, I gave everybody probably two small ones and a medium. So, same thing, push it and then one there and a little guy over there and then there should be a medium one. Can go right there. All right, what can we Stella? Uh, so, I'm gonna do, okay. So you have to be careful with your Stella pen. If you're, if you used it on a color, you wanna make sure there's no color in it. Cause if there was red in there, it would turn my blue flowers into a little bit of red flowers. All right, so we're just gonna Stella them slightly. I have seen people in class like Bonnie, <laughs> she will Stella this entire designer series paper and just put a little bit of bedazzly all over that. It just creates this little iridescent glow to it. All right, that would be card number two. And we're gonna stick this right here. <laughs> All right, so that is what we have for card number two for the flowering rain boots. All right, next card is my favorite. You guys, I always save my favorite for last. If you haven't figured that out, that's just how I roll. We need Poppy Parade, gray granite and a pear pizzazz. All right, so for you guys, this is what we've got going on. So we, Kelly and I, well, Dad Norman is the one who first introduced me to this whole DSP blocking is kind of what we called it. Um, oh, you guys like it, it's pretty, yay, I love it. Um, DSP blocking, where you start off with a piece of paper and you cut it and then you end up with like sections. <laughs> you guys, I did this card for, not this card, but the DSP blocking for the pineapple card for Celebration Who Rah Rah class. I loved it. And when Diane and I were thinking about this class, we're like, well, what can we do with this paper? It's so pretty. So the, this is the peach paper again. So Poppy Parade with um, pear pizzazz and gray granite make great color combination here. So let's take a drink of water. Stay hydrated. Okay. So yes, we have here, you guys, in your card kit, you know, referring back to this piece. So this is the piece that you've already cut out and stamped to those flowers. Now you need to fit your rain boots on here, the tulips and the stems and the leaves. You have plenty of room because you've only really used this much. So you have a whole bunch. If you don't need to use it all, save that little scrap for something else down the road. Okay, um, so my Magic of TV has these done already. So these are three things done. In your kit, you'll have some of this gray granite shimmer ribbon. I love it, I love it. L-O-V-E, love this ribbon. I'm a silver person versus a gold person. So this to me is silvery and this is carrying over. I am happy about that. You have more than enough. It's only to go along that back edge there. Yeah, the colors are awesome, Linda. So this is my, my, my favorite, I love it. So I didn't cut my piece because I wanted to show you guys how to do this. But if you recall, I showed you Amy's kit earlier so i gave you guys yours let's see if this is the right one yes so amy's kit here shows this so you guys will have to know that you piece these together like this it and don't even honestly don't worry about the pattern you like you can figure out these two and these two but you might end up it's just I wouldn't worry about a pattern because a lot of it gets covered up anyways, but just know I've already cut yours for you so that you don't have to do it. Um, yeah, that silver is so rich. I agree, Laura. So thanks for letting me use this Amy as a, <laughs> a template. <laughs> Love it. It was just sitting here by my desk ready to get mailed out in the future. All right, so we're gonna cut this as a, a group here though so you guys can see it. You have a little strip here for a sentiment. You have your white piece with a poppy parade mat that will go on. You have two poppy parade mats, one white mat, and then you have again a pear pizzazz base. So let's fold that in half and burnish it. All right, so there's one. 
Let's see what we should do first. Let's cut our designer paper. So I'm gonna make you guys jelly when I pull out my little my little baby cutter. This was a free gift during celebration a couple years ago when you signed up. <laughs> Can't get it anymore. But your paper is five by three and three quarters, which is basically um, a mat for here. So yes, and Deb, I'm very happy it's staying too. So you have to basically cut off an inch on one side. So three and three quarter minus one is two and three quarter. So you could either take it and cut it at one inch or I like to cut at the two and three quarter because then there's more stability at the top here where I put my paper. So this is two and three quarter and I'm cutting off one inch. So that was first. And now we're cutting off an inch on that side. So um, because my cutter is not long enough, <laughs> now I'm gonna flip it over this way and cut my inch off. And I'm gonna use this one line as a guide because that's where one inch is. Okay, so that was this top piece. Now this one, you have to cut it at one and a half or three and a half, whichever, you know, from whichever end. And so this is here. So I'm gonna cut this at one and a half like that. So then that goes there. So it's, we call it DSP blocking because it creates blocks of DSP. And then let's glue them on right away. So I'm going to flip these all upside down and know that, oh, look at there's the peachy flowers. Uh, I'm gonna glue them. I'm only gonna do a couple at a time. You gotta be very careful when you do this. There's not a lot of distance. Um, and what I mean by distance is there's just it's a little gap. So this one, I'm flipping it back over and that's gonna go along the bottom. So it's gonna give you just a little red. I'm gonna get this guy right away and see once because now I can wiggle around if I need to, but I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna leave them sit there. Little glue, little glue. Get them picked up. So right now the liquid glue still allows you to wiggle around if you need to, but that one looks like it's in a good spot. And then, oh, I did good, okay. But I knew that there wasn't a lot of wiggle room, but if you need to like MacGyver these around a little bit, you can still slip and slide them. So, okay. Then this can get flipped over. And then that will go on the front of our card base. Oops, I completely missed the hole. <laughs> oh, I wasn't watching as I was doing it, that's why. Okay, get off of there, little goo ball. Okay, so there's the front taking shape. All right, then our inside and this white. You can see we frosted them with some of the Poppy Parade ink. So let's, what does frosting mean? It's like frosting a cake, you guys. So open up your ink pad and find your sponge dauber. And what you do is you dip in and, and see what I'm doing is I'm adding color to the edge of the white paper. You can go a little thicker, you can go a little thinner. At the end of the day, <laughs> I try to make it not look equal because if you try to make it look equal, you're gonna make it unequal somewhere and then you're not gonna be happy. So I'm purposely doing big splotches, little splotches, getting my finger in it too, and that's it. So there you go, I just, you know, if that side got thick, go back and add a little more to that side. You're just adding color around it. And what that's doing is it looks sharp, but then as soon as you put it against the poppy parade, it doesn't look as sharp. And we did that on both the white mat on the inside and the outside. And what I'm doing is I'm not going back and forth. If you pull it back up, you're gonna catch it. So I'm going down with the dauber I'm righty, so I hold it with my left, and I'm trying to make sure I add a lot of stability with my hands so the paper doesn't get flippy floppy all over the place. As the ink disappears from the sponge dauber, go back and get more ink. If you wanna go back and just add a little more thickness, go for it. Okay, so that's what sponging the edges does, okay? 
So we, and then when you're done with this, just take it underneath the tap water and rinse it out with water that will clean it out. It will always stay, <laughs> it'll always stay a certain color. All right, so now this one is rain or shine, I'm here for you. So let's find where that is and grab our piercing mat. And practice. Oh, my printer just started. It might print. You guys might hear my printer going. Somehow it connected. Listen to the echo. Oh, what's it doing? That only took, what, an hour and 15 minutes? <laughs> All right, so rain or shine, I'm here for you. On the inside, what do I have here? Where's my inside? Oh, the boots. Okay. Ha! Ah! Very nice, very nice. So, you guys, this is why I was two minutes late, is because I was waiting for this thing right here. So, all right, we're gonna make this happen. You guys, this is, this is the process involved with um, doing a Facebook Live, is you want people to know where they can find you. <laughs> and I waited for my printer for two minutes. If you guys saw, I, I went live at like, 102 because I'm like I can't keep waiting for this thing you guys I would have been an hour and 10 minutes if I would have been late for the if I would have waited for it so this is the process for you guys that want to do Facebook lives it's always important that people know how to find you <laughs> right oh man so here we go there's my email address in case you guys want to sign up for a class there's my phone number <laughs> there's my current host code <laughs> yeah cross this off the list I got it on okay so let's go back to the card here. So we've got that stamped. Now, if you wanted to, you could sponge the edge of that. I noticed my thumb must have had red ink on it. So I got a little spot on it. So I actually think I'm going to flip that over and we're going to stamp it one more time. It's very important not to have ink all over your fingers when you're wanting to stamp something nicely. All right. So this is going to go right back there. God. All right. Now, it's 9, 10 p.m. in South Africa. Yeah, you're almost ready to get turned on your game, wind down and go to bed for the night. All right, what is it? Well, yeah, so you're 9, 10, so you're eight hours ahead. Okay, um, so there's that. Now, going back to Amy's piece, remember you have that white piece of paper, you guys. So by the magic of TV, you'll want to cut out or stamp your flowers and poppy parade on there. You will want to stamp your stems and your leaves in pear pizzazz, Okay. And then you will need your rain boots are in gray granite. The gray granite went really well. I mean, you could use smoky slate. You could use basic gray at second strength. But this, for those that have the die set, there are dies that cut out the leaves and stems, the flowers, and the rain boots. If you have them, great. Use them. And if you don't have them, get your scissors out and start cutting. Okay? Okay. So we're gonna need tearing tape. So I'm gonna set these back over here. So magic of TV, I've got my boots, this and this. Remember I had from Amy's kit, you guys, you have plenty of white scrap paper there to use. Okay, I think that all of our, nope, we gotta stamp our rain boots. Okay, so I am gonna get the rain boots out and we're gonna stamp them in basic, nope, gray granite. And they are going to go in the bottom left hand corner so depending on which way focal images are facing like I generally put stuff in the bottom right hand corner but if my boots are facing that way they look like they're walking off the page so on my sample here you can see that I put my boots in the bottom left hand corner and give them a second let that ink marinate onto the paper don't be fast and do a bloop and because then your ink's not going to give it a nice crisp image Okay, so there you guys got to see the rain boots in action. So I think that might be it for the stamping. So let's get a little glue happy. So let's do this one and then this one. And flip them over and we'll put our adhesive on them. Okay, so that one goes on here. The great thing about the liquid glue is it gives you time to move it around and it's not like there's to so watch this. You can slip and slide until you're like, oh man, there it is right there. Get that lined up really nicely. 
Okay, little edge thing needs to get snipped off. Okay, so you can see our ribbon is on the back hand side, <laughs> the back right side here, up there. So what you're gonna do, <laughs> thanks Elaine. They're all little masterpieces, right? <laughs> A frame them. <laughs> this one would be adorable in a frame. If you guys had a little five by seven frame, that would be the cutest little card to put in a frame. So tear and tape on the right back side. Don't worry if your tear and tape goes over the edge. Okay, so I ripped off way too much. Not way too much, but I ripped off too much. Well, instead of throwing it in the garbage and getting stick everywhere, you guys, all I do is take it, peel it off, and then just roll it back onto itself. It's really okay. And then you're not having to sit there and cut it off and do that extra step. So what you're gonna do is grab that gray granite ribbon and now you're just going to catch the edge of it with your card. Make sure you've got it straight. I wasn't straight in my eye, it wasn't straight. Okay, so there. Now, it's hardly hanging on there. So you guys, I will just to make sure it's safe. <laughs> and not gonna fall off in the future, I'm gonna run another little strip right over the top of it. I'm not going to take this off though. I'm popping this up with dimensionals. And if I take and peel that off, it'll wanna stick flat there and it will kinda compete with my, like the fact that I wanna raise this up, right? So I'm gonna leave these popped up, leave that on here so that that tape isn't kind of exposed grab my ribbon scissors and all you're going to do is use the red poppy parade as a guide and use the red poppy parade as a guide and little flip them off. I think that you should have just a little bit that needs to get cut off. All right. So that's it for ribbon. It would be absolutely adorable in a frame. Deb, I can't wait to see how it looks when you make it. I'm teasing, <laughs> but I would be. Oh, it's such a pretty card. Okay, so back to the, the basics here. So let's now flip this over. And it's pretty much centered on the card. Left to right. Hi, Myrtle. How are you doing today? All right, so I've got it top to bottom, left to right, like here. A white picture frame, a little white picture frame, a five by seven would be awesome. Okay. So what do we got going on? We've got some boots. I completely popped up the boots. So let's go for that and we'll get them put on the card. We're gonna do that many. Um, for those that are um, new to and don't know about the pick tool, you can also use it to pick off your backs. So you can see they, um, you just push down into it and it picks off your back. And I showed somebody that this weekend at class and they thought that was awesome. In case you don't have the nails, the worst thing you can do is go to pick something up and then it cuts underneath your nail bed there. It hurts. And sometimes that's what these dimensionals, you know, if you get them just right. All right, so this guy's gonna go on here. Uh, the stems now. So these stems kind of lay here and then the flowers are gonna go on. So how the stems are gonna work is I'm gonna put a couple, what, like let's say here, say you here, dimensionals there and there, but I want them to be flat on my boots and they should be, but to help them stick down and stay part of the boots, I am gonna run a little bit of liquid glue along the bottoms. <laughs> if you ever get to it, you will send me a picture <laughs> laughing out loud, yes. <laughs> Oh, that would be funny. I, I mean, it wouldn't be funny to me. I would love to see it someday when you do send me a picture. Hi, Jody Storman. All right, so that's here. So I put a little liquid glue to help keep the, the leaves, like that they're flush coming out of the rain boots. Now these guys here, I'm doing good too, Myrtle. These are double stacked up with little baby dimensionals. Let's see if I have any little ones. Whittle, whittle ones. I have big ones, but I need whittle ones. Okay, hang on. I think the little ones in white will be better. So by the magic of TV, I have another pack of dimensionals. Tip Tuesday here, guys. I always cut, open up my dimensionals like this. I hate flaps. If you guys know me personally, I hate flappy glue things. And so I open up like this and now they slide in and out without causing a, a ruckus. So these guys are on here, but they are popped up double, like a Oreo double stuff cookie. So we're gonna first prep with one round. 
of them. All right, like that. And then we're gonna put double high, like an Oreo double stuffed cookie. So we're gonna put, it just looks cool when they're, they're coming out and higher than the, the rain boots. So now I'm just putting a second one right over the top of the first one. <laughs> it looks kind of weird when they're, they're double high, but when it's on the card, it doesn't. So you guys, I've been working on this bus trip. So I'm taking my team and some other gals um, to Indianapolis in November for the Stampin' Up! On Stage convention. I have 50, uh, out of a bus that holds 55 people, and a cooler, so if there's 56 seats, but I'm, my cooler gets one of them. Um, I have 25 people signed up already. Isn't that awesome? 25 people, so my bus is half full. Okay, so that's like that, and now this goes here. But you do not wanna put dimensionals across the whole thing because it'll be kind of rounded like that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is put a dimensional way on the left side and the right side, just like I'm doing here. And then you're gonna put liquid glue in the middle because the boots are already raised up. And so by just putting a little liquid glue, it'll help keep that flat. And then the dimensionals are going to adhere to the, the mat that's below it. So that's gonna go, how do I want it? Right about like that, I'm guessing. Maybe like that. Yeah, it's gonna be an epic bus trip. It really will be. I'm excited. Um, so that is almost it. We have some rhinestones and we have to glue our inside in. Otherwise, we have this Mac Daddy card ready to go here. So Poppy Parade and Pear Pizzazz is your color combination for this one. Um, oh, Alice, I bet you're gonna, are you gonna go to North? Are you, Alice, I don't know, are you a demonstrator? If you're a demonstrator, the on stage is in Indianapolis. If you are not a demonstrator and want to join us, you could be on my team and meet us down in Indianapolis. I've got um, 40 rooms booked at the hotel. I know the summer creative escape comes first, Deb. You are so correct. We can't lose sight of that. <laughs> I have 40 rooms that I'm booking down at the hotel downtown, right? Like maybe a 10 minute drive from the convention center. So we are gonna do a shoebox swap on Saturday night and we have organized swapping and it's just gonna be fun. You guys, I have five gems. Yes, five. Uh, so I have I think you guys have five. I'm pretty sure I put five in your kits. Um, so we've got on the edges of our banner on the left and the right side and um, two on this side and then a, another one over here. So a total of five, okay? So that's it for the gems. Now, what can we Stella is always the question here. So let's put that away. Um, and two guys, if you missed it, I did a Facebook Live Friday afternoon going over my in-color clubs, going over my product shares, and going over my DSP sampler. So if you missed that video, go back and watch it because I'm taking reservations now for all of those things. Um, I'm afraid to do the boots, but we're going to do the boots. So... Um, lots of gems. I know, Deb, more than three. <laughs> you guys, it looks so gemmy, doesn't it? It's so pretty. There's five of them on there. Generally, I do three, you guys, because when you're kidding up like 30 or 40 or 60 or 80 of something times three, it's still, got, um, um, it's still a lot. Uh, you do foster care and I'm helping raise my grandson. Oh, yes. that's And it's right in your backyard. Um, you guys, what I would do is Stella up your designer paper here. You'll know what I mean if you go to try to Stella up your rain boots and it bleeds kind of like, there's like, it's detail. There's little, I'll put the camera close on it so you guys can see it. So what we're gonna do, this would be so pretty in a frame. I can't wait for Deb to make one. <laughs> Deb, I'm teasing. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put a little there. I am, so I'm not stella these flowers because they have these little dots of color. The same with the way that the stamp is set up, that if you Stella over that, what it does is it blends the ink together and you lose the definition of the stamp. So we're going to call it good with that. And we're going to put this guy and this one. I keep four of these, one of each of these. You guys are, some of you are getting the caddy from me. Um, 
I keep four of them in the back here. Four, I have one of each, the big, the small, and the black and the white, and they fit in there nicely. And then that's where the tear and tape goes in the back there. So, so put that away. All right, so let's bring in what we did for our hard day of stamping in the hive today. All right, we did three cards, and I believe at the moment I have a couple sets left. If I miss somebody, I'll have to double check emails. But let's get this over here. Um, so we made, my favorite one is this one. And we have, <laughs> Deb, I'm just teasing you. It's just funny because that's what somebody would always say to me. Oh, it'll make great when you make it. I'm like, I don't have time to make it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So there you go, guys. We've got our pear pizzazz with poppy parade, pear pizzazz with balmy blue. And then we've got our coral, calypso coral um, with, the white. They all feature the Sweet as a Peach designer series paper. I couldn't tell you right now if that carried over, um, is still available or not. Have three different embellishments. Um, Cindy, yes, I can put you down for this kit. And I believe that you owe me what you want for a class. So this might even be covered um, as a free class because you had company the last week and a half. And I'm pretty sure you placed an order and I'm waiting for you to tell me what one you want. So Carmen says her first one, it, her favorite is the first one. Okay. Jody likes the blue one. Okay. So this is the stamp set again, you guys, just in case you missed it. It's flowering rain boots. Um, it comes with dyes. So if you want to get all of it, um, Julie loves the coral one. Paula likes them all. Betty says pretty cards. Yeah. And I got my print out off the printer. <laughs> in the middle of it all. So you guys, if you need to email me, here's my email address. You can check out my website at cardsbychrisb.com. My phone number, text, call, you can Facebook message me. Laura says the last one. I do too. Current host code is this. I need to update my website to show this, but this is really the updated one because the other one, I'm going to close it down here today or tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you love all the cards. Yes, it is still available when I check the list. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, Deb, you asked me about what paper it was. So there you go. Um, Myrtle loves them all, but the blue one's her favorite. So yeah. Okay. So you guys, I will do, I'm going to, um, go through, I did not do this yet, but so Cindy, you had placed an order. So we'll mark you down. So I'm going to do a little door prize drawing you guys for those people that place orders to get this class for free. So Barb Barco, you are number one. Um, Laura Sullivan. Oh, Laura, you're on the list. You already got this class. So I got to take you off the back end here. Um, I missed it. You you were number four. So you should have gotten these kits in your um, package that I sent out. So you should double check that to make sure they're in there. So Laura, you're number two. Um, let's see here. Amy, you're number three. Um, Debbie Schultz, you are number four. Becky Gandolfo, you are number five. Laura Wood, number six. Tammy Steckling, you're number seven. Um, Cindy Runtree, you're number eight. Um, Carla Lake, you're nine. Karen Stagg, you're number 10. And I think that's it. So we will do a random number generator for those 10 people to see who will win a little door prize. How the door prizes work, you guys, is the next time you take a class with me, then your gift will be in there with a little card that says you got um, a prize. Um, I have a bunch of them that need to go out. I'm mailing, you guys, I'm working now, what I worked on this morning, and I'm going to go back upstairs and finish is I'm cutting all the cardstock for the Ink Color Retirement Class, Flowering Fields, and Ink Paper Scissors featuring Beauty of the Earth. And that's what mom and I are spending all the day tomorrow. We're going to kit all that up. Um, I think I might have eight to nine left of Beauty of the Earth. I might have 20 left of Flowering Fields, and I might have 15 left of Ink Color. So I'm getting to the end. Like, I'm getting down there on card kit classes. So, um... That's what we're working on tomorrow. And those classes are all coming up next week and the following week. So there's a bunch coming. April was a busy month, you guys. Holy Moses and a half. So um, just a little side note, that's what I'm going to be working on. In case you guys want to get on the list for anything, um, please reach out to me so I can get you guys signed up. But we're going to do a random number generator. And I'll flip the camera down so you guys can see the number that pops up with me. So I said there was 10. So... I'm going to put 10 in here, and I'm going to click the word generate. When I click generate, it's going to populate a number. Number three. Number three is Amy. Amy Ponce. You, I, I don't ever know if I should say Ponce or Ponce, but Amy Ponce. 
you are number three, and so you get the door prize. So yay. And good thing is, you have a package that we'll be mailing out. So you guys, everything that I'm kidding up tomorrow will get mailed on Thursday. And all of my customers that aren't demonstrators that got their own catalogs already or discount shoppers, you will be getting the Stampin' Up! catalog in this package of card kits as well. And so Amy, your package will be going out on Thursday with the classes I had picked out for you and also um, your little door prize gift and um, a catalog. Yay! So congratulations to Amy. All right, I'm not done yet. I almost forgot though. I have these four classes or these cards from this class, these four cards from this class. Um, let me flip down so you guys can see it. Let me go back out of here and get my Facebook. There it is. Okay, so we did this class. Um, we did this artfully layered. This was ink, paper, scissors last week. Um, this coming week, you guys, is Beauty of the Earth. It's the 28th, so not next week. It's not this week. <laughs> it's actually two weeks. Two and a half weeks is the 28th. Um, Beauty of the Earth, they are amazing cards. So I had drawn the winners for this one here. So, um, oh there, it paused and then it started again. Okay, so da -da -da -da, drum roll. These are winner, winner, chicken dinners go to Vicky Selix or Selix. It's V-I-K-K-I-S-E-L-I-X. So Vicky, your name was drawn for that one. Oh my gosh, you guys, this was the Mac Daddy one from this class. Oh yeah, Laura, I, I emailed the PDF last Wednesday morning. Okay. Laura, you're on the team. Just know that I always give the PDF tutorial to my team in an email before class. And um, the PDF will be available in the Be Happy Stampers Facebook group um, once I have a chance of adding the links. So by tomorrow, probably, I'll have it in our team page. So one of my gifts to my team is I always give the PDF tutorials that I make um, for free through the Facebook group, also via email. So yay, so you can look for it there. All right, this one was the Mac Daddy one where it opens up like this and drum roll da, 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 goes to Becky Gandolfo. Yay, Becky. You are going to be getting this card in the mail with this cute little belly band. Okay, so that was Becky's. Um, Vicky, I don't have your address. So if anybody knows Vicky, I need to know her address to send her the card. Otherwise, Becky, I've got yours. Da, 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 da. This one goes to Elizabeth Israel. I-S-R-A-E-L, like Israel, the country. So Elizabeth, you are the lucky winner of this one. I don't have your address, so if you could send it on to me, I will get you this card to you. Yeah, these foliage cards were awesome. I agree, Luann. And the book card da -da -da, goes to open up. You guys see it looks like that. A cute little book card. Nancy Charles from Muskegon, Michigan. I have your address, girl. So those cards will be... Um, as soon as I get, I need like, um, Vicky's address, I think, and Elizabeth. So, but I know the other two. So I'll try to get them in the mail this week. They'll go out probably by Thursday with my whole package of mail that I have going out. So, whoo, I think we covered it all, you guys. Happy Monday afternoon. There's some fun stamping. So what I have coming up tonight is a club class, you guys. My monthly club class meets the second Monday of the month, and we always make the monthly cards. <laughs> so we're going to be making that hat card. Oh, this is what it is. I'll show you guys. So this is what we're doing Thursday night, you guys. Thursday um, are these three cards, the ladybug, the hat card, and then the, the palm tree card. So um, you guys can catch me live at 6 o'clock on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central on Thursday. <laughs> Not Sunday. Thursday. Um, tomorrow I'll be live at some point for a tip Tuesday and I'm going to sneak into the VIP group and make a couple cards with you this week as well. So that's what I've got on the docket. Um, and then we've got Easter for those that celebrate Easter. You guys, it's already coming up. We had Palm Sunday yesterday. My dad got his palms and he's braiding them and he always gives them out to all the kids. <laughs> he has done that for probably 40 years, 46, my brother's 46. So he's probably done that all of his life. And so, yes, uh, so we have Easter. Um, but um, I'm actually going to be, I haven't hung out with my girlfriend, Mandy, for a long time. We haven't had a weekend away. And this was the only weekend. I really didn't have anything on the docket for classes because it's Easter weekend, right? So Mandy and I are actually going out of town and we're going to hang out and um, have fun just being with each other. <laughs> so it's probably been two, since pre-pandemic since we went on, a, we used to go on a, a yearly vacation together for a long weekend. And so that's this weekend. So that's what I've got. So 
no ham and eggs for me. <laughs> so, but yes, that's what we got coming up, you guys. So dying eggs tomorrow, Deb said. Yeah, yes. We used to do that all uh, with all the grandkids too. Uh, my brother and his family are actually, other I have three brothers, you guys. One of my brothers is actually down in Florida right now for vacation. So they'll be back tomorrow, I guess. So no dying eggs for them this year. <laughs> so unless they sneak it in yet. So, all right, you guys. I think that's all I've got for now. Um, if I forgot anything, I'm sure at some point I'll get to it live. Um, we decided we're, you know, Deb, we're going to Chicago against mom's and Tyler's thoughts. Um, you know, like we talked about, any city has bad areas, right? And we're just not going to go in the bad areas, right? So we're, we found a little hotel. It's not a little hotel. We found a hotel and we're just going to hang out and do things, a little shopping and there's um, a place called Howl at the Moon, which is like a karaoke bar. So we're going to hang out on one night and do that, I guess. So anyway, that's um, all my juicy details, you guys, on what I've got going on. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm off to cut cardstock and um, I'm going to try to see if I can sneak in this VIP uh, Facebook Live in a little bit. So if you're part of the VIP group, um, make sure you catch that. To be part of my VIP group, it's if you're on my team or... Uh, Customer who has purchased product from me is how I do it. If you've purchased the classes from me by just paying fees, I don't count it. But if it's um, a class where it's a product-based class, to me, that means you've bought product from me. So uh, I try my best to get everybody in there that I can, as, as, as somebody buys from me. Um, but if I've ever forgotten, you guys just reach out to me and I'll, I'll see if I can add you. So no worries there. All right. Yes, we're going to be smart ladies this weekend. You betcha. <laughs> All right, you guys. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. We'll see you soon, I'm sure, in the next 24 hours. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys.